Americans got over the racial divide when we elected a black president. Not only once, but twice. Americans overwhelmingly voted for the man, blind to his color. His color made no difference to American voters. Long past the issue of race, voters long past the Civil War, long past the Civil Rights era, focused more on the content of the character than the color of the skin. But this week's shooting of 12 police officers and two civilians in Dallas is a reflection of a new deep division created by that very man. The shooting in Dallas was not just about racism. Make no mistake, that dirtbag shooter who will remain nameless in this open was a racist. An African American, he wanted to kill only white people, especially white officers. And the shooting in Dallas wasn't just about police brutality. I got news for you folks. Police brutality is colorblind. It crosses all racial and ethnic lines. I know I've prosecuted them. And it wasn't just about someone mentally ill. I've always found that stigma too easy an excuse for evil. And it wasn't about guns either. Dallas was about anarchy. It was about lawlessness. It was about rhetoric, the rhetoric that too easily inflames those who feel wronged. Rhetoric that does nothing but repeatedly stoke the flames and scars of old wounds resolved long ago. At a time when Americans were both experiencing and fearing the reality of a Muslim jihad against us, our president, at a prayer breakfast no less, attempts to reconcile or explain murders in the name of Allah with this. Unless we get on our high horse and think this is unique to some other place, remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. In our home country, slavery, Jim Crow all too often was justified in the name of Christ. And after the shooting of 12 police officers, he seeks to again remind us not of the situation of the 12 officers shot, the shooting and the injured and the trauma that surrounded it, but instead talks of the deaths of two African Americans, a follow-up that seems like another get off your high horse, folks, it's your turn. Americans of all races and all backgrounds are also rightly saddened and angered about the deaths of Alton Sterling and Philando Castile and about the larger persistent problem of African Americans and Latinos uh, being treated differently in our criminal justice system. The problems of African Americans and Latinos being treated different, uh, treated differently in our criminal justice system. Every chance he gets, he stokes the flames. Example: Trayvon Martin, followed by a not guilty verdict, and Ferguson's Michael Brown, a thug who tried to grab a cop's gun and got himself shot. There wasn't even a grand jury indictment, and not even federal charges against the police officer. Ferguson was about anarchy, and anyone with a functioning brain would have to assume that for Michael Brown to grab a cop's gun suggests it wasn't his first encounter with the law. Who told Brown that he and not the law should be in control? Yet the Department of Justice and the Attorney General and high-end government officials all rushed to Ferguson, to his funeral as well. And Baltimore, another training ground for anarchists, a perceived wrong. The response based on rhetoric of racial injustice and hate, that should be a violent protest? The response should be the burning of businesses, many owned by African Americans? And a DA who outrageously runs to a microphone and announces an indictment of six cops saying she hears the calls of a lawless mob? And again, all the police painted as racist, yet no convictions. And it was an African American judge who made the calls. And in New York, the chant, what do we want, dead cops, when do we want them now? And then two cops innocently eating lunch in their squad car, assassinated lo not long after. When we have leaders who vehemently support the First Amendment language and protest the call for the deaths of those who wear the badge, but then caution the rest of us not to say something that would offend another's religion. 
And if, in fact, we defend the legal right of a person to insult another's religion, we're equally obligated to use our free speech to condemn such insults and stand shoulder to shoulder with religious communities, particularly religious minorities who are targets of such attacks. And our president, upon hearing of the assassination of five police officers, all white, and the shooting of another seven officers, wants to talk about a white kid walking into a black church shooting. Why, Mr. President, are you even bringing this up? It's the same thing you did at the prayer breakfast. After an American has his head cut off, you want to talk about the Crusades. It's as if it's your turn. Mr. President, you have done nothing but tell us we deserve it. You have done nothing but look back in the rearview mirror. But when I look at Dallas, all I saw were whites and blacks running away from anarchy. All I saw were whites and blacks picking each other up. That's the America I see, and no one is going to change my mind. And no one, not even you, Mr. President, is going to do that. In politics and in life, ignorance is not a virtue.